reporting finds the U.S. Department of Agriculture announced the National School Lunch Program for low-income students would not be available to schools who do not adopt the Biden administration's interpretation of Title IX. That interpretation looks to prevent discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity. Under the new plan, schools that do not allow students who identify as a different gender than their biological sex to use their preferred bathrooms would not qualify for the funding, which in part is used to fund those school lunches. Joining us now to discuss, Executive Director for FightForSchools.com. He's a dad in Loudoun County, Virginia, Ian Pryor. Ian, thanks so much for coming on. When we talk about this story, what's really at stake here? Well, I mean, we are talking about school lunches at schools across the country, public schools, private schools that take advantage of this federal program, um, where student lunches are paid for or partly paid for by federal funds. So, you know, what the Biden administration is saying here, really through a press release, not the appropriate vehicle of a rulemaking, is that if you do not put in policies that allow, you know, a child to use a bathroom of a you know, different biological sex, then they will not give you this federal funding for school. So ultimately, you are, you are creating a situation where um, underprivileged children are going to suffer as a result of schools not adopting these woke, you know, gender ideology policies that the Biden administration wants to force on public schools. And the USDA did put out a statement in regards to their request. They say, as a result, state and local agencies, program operators and sponsors that receive funds from FNS must investigate allegations of discrimination based on gender identity or sexual orientation. Those organizations must also update their non-discrimination policies and signage to include prohibitions against discrimination based on gender identity and sexual orientation. A lot of words up there that could could be a bit confusing for some people, Ian, but what stands out to you? Yeah, well, so that's how they do it, right? They they frame it in sort of an anti-discrimination lens. And look, nobody wants any child to be, you know, treated differently or bullied because of any reason. But what they're saying is that, you know, you are going to need as a student, as a teacher, to refer to students by their preferred pronouns. You're going to need to let students use the bathroom of the gender with which they identify. Same thing with locker rooms also going to put in place policies that say the student who comes to a school counselor or teacher and says, well, you know, I want to be a girl now or I want to be a boy now, the school does not have to tell the parent unless the student who could be as young as five years old gives permission to the school. So really what you have here is the Biden administration saying, I'm going to steal your lunch money. I'm going to take your lunch money unless you do exactly what I say. That is the federal government bullying states and localities to implement these woke agendas. When you think about how many districts might be impacted by this, how many schools, how many elementary schools, how common is this? Do we see students uh, across the country who are would be interested in, in entering a bathroom that is not of their biological sex? Well, you know, whether they're interested or not, schools are, are doing as much as they can to effectively normalize this so that you know, they start putting books in libraries that are promoting, you know, gender identity questions and transgenderism as young as kindergarten. So students are constantly around this. And then when you have this, you know, this agenda being baked into elementary school, and then you have discipline as a result of students, you know, misgendering other kids, you are basically putting it in front of impressionable uh, children who become impressionable teenagers. And you're starting to see this, this, this movement really explode in schools. I mean, look, this used to be something that, you know, you would have gender dysphoria in young boys and up to 80% would phase out. Now what you're seeing is this is happening with teenage girls in middle school and high school. And there's no rational explanation for this other than the fact that it's being pushed by public schools. It's being pushed on social media, you know, and parents are, are really letting it happen. And it leads down a very dark road of, you know, gender, uh, puberty blockers, hormone treatment, and ultimately surgery. Are parents being made aware of what's going on in your experience that you've been reporting on? Well, schools are really doing everything they can to keep the parents out of the loop. I mean, you're, you see policies that, you know, parents may not be supportive of this, so we take it on a case-by-case -case basis on whether to discuss it with the parents. We've seen it in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. We've seen it in Loudoun County, Virginia. We've seen it in other places where they put in place this policy. So parents really have to make the choice, you know, do I 
Do I speak out against my beliefs to my child to prevent them from getting discipline for possibly misgendering someone? Or do I take the risk that, you know, my child is going to say the wrong thing at six, seven, eight, nine years old, be disciplined, be ostracized, but at least um, I'm standing strong on my convictions and my beliefs. And that's what parents are dealing with today. When it comes to finding an alternative solution, do you have a, an answer for parents who might say, you know what, I, I disagree with what's going on in the schools, but I also still want to send my kids to a public school because I'm a taxpayer and this is convenient for me in the district? Sure. Well, you know, I, I also work with America First Legal. I'm a senior advisor there. And one of the things that, that we're doing is we're looking at various districts throughout the country. Um, and litigation is, is always an option to try and push back these policies. I mean, they're woefully unconstitutional. They violate the 14th Amendment. They violate the First Amendment. Uh, and, you know, you're seeing it all across the country where parents are stepping up and taking these schools to court to enforce their rights, to enforce their child's rights. Um, because ultimately, you know, you have elections every two years, every four years. But within that time, within that two years or four years, a lot of damage can be done to a young child who goes from seven years old to 11 or eight to 12, where they can be indoctrinated by this, this gender ideology. And by the time parents are able to, you know, figure it out and get the help they need, it's, it's too late. Hmm. We've seen parents speak out at school board meetings and in some cases even decide, you know what, maybe I could serve on the school board better than those who are doing so. Ian Pryor, thanks so much for coming on. Really interesting conversation. Thanks for having me. You're welcome.